Hi there guys, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster and if you've been following the channel for a while, then you'll know that I've recently um, taken part in Leeds Castle International Joust. Not only that, just before then I painted my own shield for the joust. I used some gold leaf on it and I promised beforehand that I would do a video about my shields and an update on how well it held up during the joust. So this is that video um, and yeah, let's have a look at my shields. So here's the shield that I was using at Leeds Castle. You can see it's painted black with a gold tree on it and then my coat of arms painted on a shield onto the tree there with acrylic paint. So I used acrylic paint on this and uh, the gold leaf was uh, not um, not technically gold leaf, it was a facsimile. Uh, so it wasn't authentic, but the idea was to do something in an authentic style um, and use modern materials to do it. It held up pretty well. If you just have a look, you can see it's taken a bit of a beating here. Here they go! Yay! Oh, man! A lance flying away for power. But actually, the gold leaf has taken some pretty direct hits from lances and is mostly in the right place. That, um, that hole there was there already. Okay. This part here, uh, that got knocked out at Leeds Castle, so the edge took a bit of a beating. And I think that actually, um, you can see this, you can just about see the wood grain still. This is just plain wood, so it doesn't have a leather or a raw hide or a fabric covering, which most shields of the period did. And I would imagine that those would do a better job at protecting the edges. So when I redo this, I think I'm going to be adding one of those. Now you could also see on the back here, I've got some straps. These are actually belts um, made by Todd of Todd Stuff. And specifically, they have a steel pin in their buckles. These ones are just nailed to the back of the shield. Very often, historical shields seem to have the staples. So again, when I redo this shield, I'm going to be pulling these off, I'm going to be adding some covers, and I'm going to be adding staples as well before reattaching the straps. All in all, I was very happy with the way that this shield coped with the weekend's jousting. It's actually um, quite thick. A lot of originals that I've been looking at recently of a similar type are around 12 millimeters thick, but that includes all of the extra layers as well. So um, once the extra layers are on here, I would imagine this would be uh, a bit thicker and a bit heavier than them. You can see as well, the curve in it is just on a single plane, it's concave. Um, that is so that it catches the lances. You actually want the lance to stick on the shield so that it breaks better and so that it doesn't glance off and strike you on your armor, which is more expensive. A lot of historical shields were curved on multiple planes and that was in part because the coronels were sharper so they could dig in and uh, and still create the break, even if there was a conque uh, convex shape to it. Um, for bolster jousting, which is what I do, that's more of a problem because we use rubber coronels instead of metal ones. So let's have a look at, for contrast, here is a shield that was painted for me by George from the Guild of St. Luke, and you can find a link to his Facebook page and details in the um, description down below. You can see this one is done with silver leaf, and he's figured it absolutely beautifully. Now, 
this is done completely authentically. The shield itself is made um, using planks that are joined together and glued together. You can see that it's curved. You've got a concave shape on the vertical plane and then what? a convex shape on the horizontal plane. Like I said, this is something that you see more in historical shields um, and it can cause a problem for the rubber coronels that we use in bolster jousting. Some bolster jousters do still use um, shields of this shape. Some historical shields are um, of this shape as well. Okay, so don't, don't think that the, any of this is hard and fast rules. Now what George has done here is he has taken the blank and he has covered it with some linen. You can just about make out there in some of the damage where the linen is. Then he has gessoed it using authentic, I think, chalk-based gesso. Then added the silver leaf in the shape of a tree and around the edges as well. And then used egg-based oil paints to paint the rest of the design on. And the, as you can see, the closer you get, the more detail you can see. Now you can see from the damage that this is actually a shield that has been used. I used it at a joust uh, a few years ago now at the uh, Wildon Downland Open Air Museum. But you can also see that it does have some other damage as well. There's some damage along the bottom there. And also, if I just turn it over here, there's some damage on the back too. This damage, some of it comes from impact with my armour. So these pieces here are where the shield itself, on being struck on the front, has then impacted with the armour and the... Um, the gesso and the paint has fractured underneath. At the bottom here, this damage here has been done by rubbing against my armour. So I actually found some red paint flakes on my arm armour there. Um, you can also see that there's some damage here to the staples. So George added staples to this one. So this had straps that went through the staples and then sewed onto them. These staples have gone all the way through the shield and they're actually applied before the fabric covering is. And they go all the way through the shield and then are hammered over kind of like a, a rivet. And it makes them very, very strong, which makes the weak spot of the shield the strap. Now you might think that that's a bad thing because the strap is quite weak. Um, but it's actually quite genius. You see, if I just go back to here, you can just about make out there's some damage here where actually um, it was at Leeds Castle. I was hit so hard that these straps pulled so hard on the nails that the straps came off. And uh, if you have a look at the photos from Leeds Castle, if you see my retrospective or anything like that, you'll see that I actually ended up having to wear a, another competitor's shield for my final three passes. Now, what this does, the staple, is it introduces an intentional weak spot. And the intentional weak spot is the strap. So if you get hit hard enough to damage the strap, then the strap fails before the shield does. Here, the nails have come out of the shield and they've actually done some damage to the shield. Whereas, if I was wearing this shield, the strap itself would break and straps are a lot easier and cheaper to replace than a shield that has been painted beautifully in the way that George has painted this one. Now, um, you can see, if you have a look, oh, I'm gonna turn it back over. Sorry for the noises. You can see that this has got a bit of a sheen to it, uh, probably a bit more visible on the back. Maybe if I move over to my third shield, you can see there's a bit of a gloss to it. Now this is another one that is painted by George. 
it's using my symbols of a golden castle on a red background with some vines and trees as well. The recurring motif of the castle is because I started my reenacting um, with the medieval siege society and uh, I mean I've always loved castles who doesn't love castles the tree is a uh, reference to a joust that happened in the 15th century in Burgundy called the joust of the golden tree and that's why I had a silver one done because the golden tree was an incredible joust it's written about in a number of different places and uh, um I think it's just a great example of chivalry. So for this one, it's possibly a bit hard to see, but George has actually made the castle stand proud of the rest of the uh, um, of the design. So it's actually higher up than the rest, gives it a bit more of a 3D image. It's got virtue at the top there. That's part of my, um, my motto. Virtue avant l'honneur. Avant l'honneur something like that um apologies if my medieval french um accent is incorrect um so we've got the vines going round we've got the castle itself we've got the vines forming an m here and the gold here is completely authentic so uh, i showed george my last video and he said yeah um it's a good thing you weren't using real gold leaf because if you tried to pick up real gold leaf with your finger then you would tear it and it would go everywhere. So uh, um, maybe I need to do a bit more practice with uh, um, with the fake stuff before I move on to the, the real deal. But um, I've got loads of projects planned with, uh, with gold leaf. Anyway, if we have a look on the back here, you can see again, you can see where this has had the fabric turned over the fabric turned over here you can see it's got staples to attach it so I've got these for the gauge strap which goes around the neck these two here for the arm strap to go around my bicep this one I haven't actually jousted in and uh, the reason for that is because this is Apart from being very beautiful, it's actually um, a mixture of authentic and inauthentic. Um, George's work is completely authentic on this one, but underneath it is a is actually my first original jousting shield, which is made with plywood and it has a layer of fiberglass to hold it all together. It makes it very, very strong. But it meant that actually when George was applying the authentic gesso and um, and trying to attach the fabric underneath um, all of this painting to it, it didn't bind as well as it did with this shield. So you can see, although this shield has been jousted with, the damage actually done to the shield by the jousting is minimal. Um, George was worried, and, and I'm worried now as well, that if I were to joust in this shield, then an impact, because it hasn't bound particularly well to the um, to the fiberglass, which is obviously a, a modern waterproof material, um, an impact might actually dislodge the entire frontage and cause the entire shield to fall apart. And I don't know that I could do that to this, such a work of art as this. Now, I do believe that beautiful shields such as this were not just parade shields that they were used in jousting which is why um, I have jousted in this one despite the fact that it is gorgeous and it's why I am intent on improving this shield and finding ways to make this more authentic and uh, and more of a piece of art uh, in order to um, to really display what uh, what a medieval person would think of as um, being a tournament ready um, equipment set. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I hope that was interesting to you. 
Um, if you're interested in seeing the work in progress of my um, attempts to create this shield, make it even more of a work of art like the awesome ones that George has, then you can check out my Patreon and I'll be posting work in progress of that and other projects there. Um, if you don't want to do that, which is completely understandable, then just hit subscribe because all of that stuff will end up in videos in the future on the channel anyway. Uh, just might take a little bit longer. Um, do check out George's work down in the description down below. Leave a like, share, subscribe, all of those great things. Thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.